Hi guys, welcome back. Um, I want to talk today a little bit about dependent sources and how we use them and get a little bit more into the math of how that goes. I'm, I'm sure you guys remember when we worked on lab four, we had a problem with a current source that only sourced 100 microamps and yet we were, or maybe, yeah, it was 100 microamps and we were trying to have that current source charge a capacitor that was going to then control the uh, degree to which a diode was lighting up. And we couldn't really drive the diode directly because the current source was just way too low. Um, and so what we did was we put a an op amp between the capacitor and the diode to act as a buffer. And we modeled that as a voltage dependent voltage source, a voltage source whose voltage output depended on some other voltage difference in the circuit. And it, but then we implemented it as an op amp. So what I want to do is talk about how do you model an op amp? Um, we were using an op amp to make a voltage controlled voltage source with a gain of one. So in LT Spice, we would set the gain E to one, and then we simply used it directly. Now the, the thing is an op amp does not have a gain of one. In fact, out of the box, you plug it in the circuit, it has a gain. Many of them have a gain of hundreds of thousands or million. Um, and so their gain is much, much higher. And there's a good reason for that. And that's what I want to talk about today. So I want to imagine we have a, uh, let's talk about uh, an op amp and how we might model that. We're going to model it as a voltage controlled voltage source. The output of the voltage controlled voltage source is a number E times the difference. We have these inputs here, the difference between the inputs. And so you can think of it like this. Basically, the output voltage is the gain E times the difference between the input voltages. Um, and that's that's really all there is to it. In the in an op amp like uh, the ones we were using in, in class, I think we were using 358s, um, their so-called open loop or nominal gain out of the box at DC frequencies right, right around zero um, is hundreds of thousands. So it's uh, very, very large. And so um, what I want to do is talk about how do we how do we model that? How do we model an op amp? And so the idea, here's an example of a circuit with an op amp. We take a one volt input connected to V plus. And then to get a follower, you may remember, I'll sh uh, we had used the 358. Let's see if I can uh, find it. Here it is. So we're going to open that with um, Chrome here and look at it. I had said that you want to use uh, figure 25. So let's scroll down. There's figure, uh, what are they? 23, 24. There it is, figure 25, the voltage follower. So we took the input and connected it to the non-inverting input of the 358. And then we just took the output and tied it back to the inverting input. And what I want to point out is that's essentially what I've done here. I took the output and tied it back around to the inverting input. The non-inverting input, I'm getting this one volt signal. And then what I want to do is calculate using the rules of this dependent source and the uh, recipe here for calculating its output. Let's calculate the voltage here. So the idea is, of course, the recipe is that the output is E times the difference between the inputs. But the output, we're tying that to the minus input. So the minus input must be equal to E times the difference between the plus and the minus input. Okay, that's the idea. Uh, now, before I go through the algebra, I just want to point out E is a very big number. And the minus input, we're hoping it'll be equal to V plus. So it's going to be in the neighborhood of a volt. So this is going to be one volt. This is going to be a number like a million or something. And so this difference has to be a millionth of a volt. This has the difference here has to be something like a microvolt if if E is really a million. And so you can see that for practical purposes, we might consider that V plus and V minus are just equal to each other. Notice that that's a general pattern. Anytime the output is some kind of normal voltage, like a volt or two volts or three volts, and you're in the domain of the amplifier where this equation is satisfied, this number is going to be super big. This is going to be a few volts. 
So this is going to be a few microvolts, or maybe a few tens of microvolts. But in any case, it's going to be peanuts compared to the volts that we're dealing with in the rest of the circuit. So we can neglect it. So the idea is you can neglect the difference between V plus and V minus in most situations when the op amp is operating in its normal range. Anyway, let's do the algebra. So we'll um, distribute the E. So now we get E times V plus minus E times V minus, then the E times V minus moves over. We can factor out the V minus here, and then we get uh, E times V plus over one plus E. That's the idea. Now, uh, you'll notice that I can simplify this by dividing by E on the top and the bottom, <clears throat> and that gives me this expression. And then since E is gonna be a big number, so I'll do a demo here in a minute with E equal to 100 so you can see how it works. But in a real amplifier, E is going to be something like tens or hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions. So E is going to be really small. So we can expand that 1 over E in the denominator and make it 1 minus 1 over E in the numerator. So you can see, take for example the case where E is a is 100, say, then uh, you can say it, v minus will be V plus times 1 minus 1 one hundredth. So it'll be within 1% of V plus. The next term is 1 ten thousandth. So it's 100 times smaller. Each of these terms in this series is 100 times smaller than the previous term. So we can basically neglect those other guys. And we can approximate it as just 1 minus 1 over E. Okay? That's the idea. All right. So let's, uh, let's see what that looks like in practice. So I'm going to pop over to the every circuit here, do a little simulation. So I'm going to grab, let's make a new circuit, and let's grab the parts we need. Uh, I need a voltage source. That's my one volt or whatever. I'm going to need a voltage control. I need a resistor. Okay. I need a voltage controlled voltage source. That's this guy. So what I want to do is remember how we have it. We're going to take the we're going to take the voltage controlled voltage source, and its output is going to drive this resistor, right? The negative terminal is going to go to ground. Positive terminal will be the output, and but we're also going to tie that around to the negative terminal of the input. So let's let's do that. So we'll take this output, go to the resistor. We'll take this side. That's going to go to ground. This guy is going to go to ground. Um, this one is going to wrap around to here. Okay, that's my negative terminal. That's the output. This guy is going to come from here. And then I'm going to need another ground. Okay, so if everything's working correctly, this output should be very nearly equal to this input. So I basically have built this follower. The only thing is right now the gain is two volts per volt, but in order to make a model of an op amp, we need to make it a lot bigger than that. So let's let's go ahead and set it to 100. That's peanuts for like a modern amplifier, but it's enough to get the point. So let's go ahead and run it. And you'll notice that here we have one volt here. This is 990 millivolts. So there's that one over E would be one over 100. So it's one volt minus a hundredth of a volt. So that's 0.99 millivolt or 0.99 volts, right? And so that's exactly what the math said it should be. The point is this model of voltage controlled voltage source doesn't draw any current from my, my source here, but it drives current through this load. So, uh, and that's basically a simple uh, voltage controlled voltage source. Now, you can actually uh, improve the situation a little bit. I mean, you can actually get gain, and we'll talk about that a little more next time. But for now, I just want you to get the idea that you can use a voltage-controlled voltage source uh, along with uh, this math that we talked about and went through and uh, understand how an op amp can be modeled with a voltage-controlled voltage source of, with a fairly large gain. But just for fun, let's go ahead and bump that gain up a little bit higher even. It's at 100 now, so let's go ahead. There's 1,000. There's 10,000. Let's go ahead and make it 10,000 and see how much better it does. 
So it's settling down, and now it's one, it can't even tell the difference. I've only got a gain of 10,000, and the darn thing shows exactly one volt. It's not really exactly one volt, it's one ten thousandth less than a volt, so 0 0.9999 volts. But the, to the precision that this uh, simulator uses, that's, that's equality. All right, that's all I have for you right now. I hope that makes sense, and we'll talk to you guys soon.